Hello and welcome to the next section in this course where we're going to be creating the TweetGram app. I'm really excited for this because this is a fun idea. Basically what we're trying to do is make a version of Twitter where instead of looking for the tweets, we are looking for the images that might be inside of some tweets. And then if you want to see some more detail, you can go find that individual tweet. And so the whole idea is that we let the user log into Twitter, get their home feed, and then we go through all those tweets and say, are there any images inside of here? And if there are, then we want to go ahead and grab those and bring them back to on the screen. So what is it that we're going to be covering in this section? First, we're going to be creating collection views so that we can display these photos in a really nice way. I think you'll like the way that that goes on. Next, we're going to be creating a login and logout process. We've already started down that road, but we're just going to keep doing that. Next, we are going to be downloading and displaying some images. And then finally, we want to make it so that we can open tweets in the appropriate way, meaning that if the user's Twitter app is on the phone, uh, they can just jump straight to the app and look at that individual tweet. And if not, they could open up a web browser to go see that. So let's go ahead and get things started off with the design. Like I had mentioned earlier, we want to get that navigation controller for the login portion. And then we want to go work on a collection view for displaying all of those photos. Let's get into it right now. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Like I said, we want to do the design aspect of everything first. And so let's start first by getting everything inside of a navigation controller. And let's move over to our storyboard here. Yeah, you can see right now there's the standard view controller that Xcode has made for us. We don't want that, so we're just going to delete it. Let's give ourselves some more space on the bottom and bring out our side menu here. So we want to bring out first a collection view controller. This is going to allow us to display those photos. It's very similar to a table view, but we'll go ahead and grab this. And then next we want to embed this in a navigation controller. And so we're going to go pull out a navigation controller. And by default, it is connected to a table view controller, but we don't want that table view controller. So select that, hit the delete bring up the navigation controller and we'll do a control drag from the navigation controller to our collection view and say that this is the root view controller meaning this is what should show up and then we want to make it so that this navigation controller is the first initial view controller you'll notice we're missing that starting arrow that says where the app should begin so with the navigation controller selected go over here to the attributes inspector and we want to scroll down until we can find the here it is is initial view controller so we'll check that and you should now have an arrow pointing there. So with that in place, the next thing that we want to do is create our login and logout button. And so we can't just put any old button there. We need a navigation button. So just search nav and look. I guess the name is a bar button item. So I led you astray there. Search for bar and this should get you to the bar button item. We're going to click and drag and just place that on the right side. So initially, we want this button to say login. So if you double click, we can hit that to say login. But we want to make it so once the user does successfully log in, that it says log out, right? And then as soon as they, they hit that button, it will sort of move back and forth. So we need to connect this to our view controller. So in order to do that, we need to make a code version of our collection view. So over here, I'm going to do a new file. Right click to get that new file menu to show up. You can alternatively go to file, new file. I think you know that by now. So we'll go ahead and we want a Cocoa Touch class. This should be a subclass of a UI collection view controller. Make sure you've got the full thing there. As for the name, you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call this probably tweet collection view controller. Okay. Go ahead and add that to the project there. Once that's on board, I'm going to make it so that this view controller is pointing to that code version. So select the view controller there. Go to your attributes inspector. This is the identity inspector. Okay. And we're going to give this the name of what we just created, the tweet. Make sure this is very important. Hit enter or tab. That will do sort of this autocomplete and make sure everything gets clicked up. And if you've done that successfully, we should now be able to select this login button. And if we go for a split view controller here, we can now go create an action and an outlet for this button. So we actually do want an outlet and an action for this button because first we need an action to know whenever the user has tapped on this button, but we also need an outlet so that when they are tapping and we come back into the app successfully, we want to be able to change this instead of saying log in to log out or log out to log in. So we're going to go ahead and first bring this in as an outlet. So I'm going to just do a control drag to the top of my view controller. 
I'm going to call this login button. If you want to get really specific, we could call it the login logout button, but I think we get the idea here, and we'll only have one button on our screen. Then also we need to bring in an action. There's a whole lot we need to get rid of in this collection view, but for now I'm just going to add it right below this view did load. And so I'm just going to do control drag here, and I'm going to call this the login tapped button. Okay, so we'll go ahead and connect that. Ooh, I brought it as an outlet. It should have been an action. So let's delete that, and then we've got to come back, select your button, and on the right side menu here, go to its outlets, and where it says login tap, delete that. Keep your login button, because that's the same outlet that we had. But now we can come back and correctly control drag, change this to say action. Then we can say, all right, login. Great, so we have that all in place for the button. I'll go back to full screen mode here. The next thing that we need to do is we need to design a custom collection view cell that can handle, you know, showing an image. And so there's one here by default. If you go inside of the collection view, you can see we have a collection view cell. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. I like to start fresh. And so if I go search now for a collection, a couple things show up, but we're looking for this collection view cell. So I'm going to go ahead and just click drag this onto the collection view. If you drop that, it should come in. Really all we need to have inside of here is an image view. So I'm going to make this big. We're going to be resizing this via code later, but just go ahead and make it big enough. And quote unquote big enough is just so that you can work with it. And I'm going to search now for an image view, drag that into there. And this image view, basically, I just want it to go edge to edge. So I'm just going to type zero tab, zero tab, zero tab. Make sure all these four bars are highlighted. Hit Add Constraints. And now I've got an image view taking up all the space. So with this in place, we then need to make it so that, you know, we have a specific a subclass of a collection view cell for this new type of cell. So here inside of our Tweet Collection View Controller, at the very bottom, I'm going to be creating a new class. And that's, as I said before, a, a subclass of a collection view cell. So I'm going to say class, and I'm going to call this maybe tweet cell. Again, colon, this is a subclass of a UI collection view cell. Okay, so we'll go ahead and plop that all in. Don't put anything in there right now. We just need to have this and go ahead and do a little command B to do a build. And so this sort of updates Xcode and everything. Once this is in place, we can go back to our storyboard and say, okay, this image view, if we select this, or we're trying to get to the cell. So click on the collection view cell over here on the left. If you don't have this menu, you can get it to open and close here, but get this collection view cell, and let's do a split screen here. We're gonna come all the way down on this file to where this tweet cell is, and I guess before we do that, we've gotta, with this collection view cell, go up to its identity inspector and say that this is a tweet cell. Make sure you've got the name tweet cell there and hit enter. Then once we have that in place, we can take, for example, this image view, come down to the bottom and do a control drag, and we'll simply just call this tweet image view. Okay, we'll go ahead and connect that. So with this all in place, let's go ahead and go back to full screen mode here, and let's get to our tweet collection view controller and start getting rid of some of the dead weight that uh, Apple has auto imported. So we don't need this did receive memory warning. We'll go ahead and delete that. As far as the navigation stuff goes, we don't need that, so we'll delete that as well. You can keep this mark if you want for the data view source stuff. I just like to get rid of that. I think it's clean without that. But this number of sections, we do want to keep this. We just want to return one every time. We are only going to have one section inside of our collection view. Here for the number of items in a section, for right now, just go ahead and return something like 50. We'll go ahead and change that later, but then this cell for item at index path, we're going to come back and work with this, so just leave that there for now. As far as this delegate goes about should select item and all this stuff, we have some other delegate functions that we're going to call, but just go ahead and delete all that we have there. And so this is just going to be real simple. We basically just saying how many sections there are, how many items, and what's going to go inside of each of those cells. Now the next step for us is to make it so that when we get to this function and we're trying to return a cell, that we can actually return that cell. And so 
what we want to do here is still do this collection view dot dq reusable cell but if you see up here at the top there's some code that you know is going to register our cell and all this stuff we are already doing that via the storyboard so we're going to actually just delete all of that and up here this private constant here that says reuse identifier we're going to delete that as well we don't need it anymore and we're going to come back down and say with reuse identifier and we're going to make some identifier and so I'm just going to say, for example, tweet cell, just like this, okay? And whatever you have inside of here, you've got to copy this exactly, go back to our storyboard, select the tweet cell, make sure it's not the image view, but the actual cell, that collection view cell, and here in the attributes inspector, we're going to give it the exact same identifier that we had. So once you've entered that, go hit tab, enter whatever you'd like. So now this means everything's officially connected and what we basically just want to do is I'm going to put a special background color on this cell. So to get this all set, we want to make sure that the cell that we got back is specifically a tweet cell. So we're going to change this to an if let where we say if let cell is equal to all this mumbo jumbo as question mark a capital tweet cell. Let's do our open and close curly brackets there. And we want to return the cell right inside. There we go. So if this was successful, we want to take our cell and get its tweet image view and set its background color to something like blue. So go ahead and put, that's got to be dot blue inside of there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that all there. We still need to return something if this didn't come back. Now if we aren't getting that cell, our app is in big trouble. So for the time being, we're just going to return standard UI collection view cell. You're going to have to do the open and close parentheses to make a new one there. But if you return just a blank collection view cell that wasn't DQ'd, you're actually going to get an error. So this is basically saying we're giving up on our app at this point, if that were to happen. Let's go ahead and see what we can get here. We still haven't dealt with the size, but we're going to get to that soon enough. So go ahead and hit run here. We just want to make sure that we can see this working. Okay, app opens up, and look at that. We've got 50 blue cells showing up here, and we've got that nice login button at the top. And we can go ahead and tap that. So we're pretty much there. Last thing that I just want to do is I want these to be edge to edge, fill up exactly half of whatever the width of the screen is. So in order to do this, we need to get to the collection views sizing, but there's a few extra steps that we've got to do in order to get that in place. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is up at the top here, we're going to want to make our class a subclass of, or at least follow to the protocol of UI collection view delegate flow layout. Is that a long name or what? UI collection view delegate flow layout. So go ahead and put that there, which then will allow us to add the function down here. If you just start typing size four, you want the collection view that's going to give us the size for an item at index path. So my screen here is so filled with stuff I'm pretty sure it's this first one I might just have to experiment but yes collection view layout size for item at index path and this is basically just saying what size should the cell be so in this case I'm going to return a CG size that's what it's looking for so I'm gonna make a new CG size and it basically just needs a width and a height so for the width I want to take whatever the width of the collection view is and divide it by two and that's going to be the same thing for the height i want it to be an exact square of whatever the width of this half of the width of the screen is and it should just look really beautiful so i'm going to get my collection view dot frame dot size dot width and i'm going to divide that by two and whatever that value is i'm going to do the exact same thing for the height because i want these things these cells to be squares. So I've gone ahead and entered that. Now to test and see if this working, it's going to be like a sea of blue. So I'm going to make it maybe return an odd number, something like maybe 19. Now yeah, we could do less than that. Let's do like 13 cells maybe. So then I could see if there's one extra at the bottom. Go ahead and place something like that in. I mean, once we have images, that's going to really tell us whether or not we have some images there. But you can see, well, we're not exactly quite there because we've still got some spacing here and so we actually want to get rid of all spacing so let's get back to our storyboard select this collection view and over here on the right this is where we're gonna change this so let's go ahead and go to the ruler here for the spacing of the cells 
we're just going to go ahead and make this zero for the cells and also for the lines. Okay, we've made that zero. Let's now run this one more time. Because if there was an error or something, it would have been giving us a pop up at the bottom there. There we go. So there's our sea of blue that we expected. And because we had an odd number, we can see that there's a little square on the bottom. Great. So visually, everything is in place for our app. Now we've just got to make this puppy work that it will connect with Twitter, download those images, display them. We are at a great place to move forward.